the Charlotte Bobcats are bad, historically bad. And like so many others, I have criticized their direction after bad trades, bad drafts, and worse management. In the last several weeks, though, all the discussion here in Charlotte came to a head as the Bobcats made history with the worst single-season record ever in the NBA. The record and the criticism around the team effectively makes the Bobcats a punchline and the city of Charlotte a spectacle of bad basketball and worse fan support. And that is when it hit me. I have been wrong in criticizing the Bobcats. Not because they're good. They're terrible, but this isn't about that. And in fact, this isn't even about the Bobcats. I came to Charlotte in August of 2004 for college. I enjoyed it so much and never even thought about moving anywhere else that I've now been here for eight years. By Charlotte's standards, I am almost a native. So many have come in the last three years, recent transplants adopting the city of Charlotte, but slow to change their cultural allegiances from homes in Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Cleveland, or Buffalo. You see, Charlotte is perennially a city in transition. Now, that's not a bad thing, but we haven't really found an identity. Banking, sure, until the market crashed. And NASCAR, sure, but that sport hasn't taken off across the country like everyone thought it would 15 years ago. Look, I'm not saying the Bobcats are our, our identity, and they shouldn't be. But I am saying that if we want a Charlotte that has a deep-rooted authenticity like New York, Philadelphia, or Boston, we have to own the Bobcats. And it's more than the Bobcats. We have to own that I-485 might not get finished. Ever. We have to own that godforsaken train that crosses Central Avenue and makes me late for everything in Plaza Midwood. Happens to me every time. And we have to own that complicated, almost comical Knights Uptown Stadium issue with Jerry Reese's injunctions. We have to own the terrible and unique traffic patterns on I-77 north of town, I-85 northeast of town, Independence Boulevard on the east side, and whatever the hell is going on at the Providence, Providence, Queens, Queens intersection in Myers Park. I still haven't figured that one out. Look, it's very, very easy for the national media to criticize the Bobcats. After all, who's going to step up and defend them? When the team is as bad as the Bobcats were this year, it becomes easy and almost infectious to pick on the lowly Bobcats. Beware, though, because that attitude creeps. You keep blowing up the Bobcats now, and before you know it, you start criticizing the NASCAR Hall of Fame, the Whitewater Center, the proposed Charlotte Knights Stadium uptown, the DNC, every public figure from both political parties. The list goes on. Look, I live in Charlotte, so it's time to own Charlotte, Bobcats included. Now, that doesn't mean that they or anybody else in town comes free of criticism. In fact, it's just the opposite. But that does mean it's time to lay stakes down in this city and own the place that we call home. One more thing that needs to be said here, too. Call them the Bobcats or call them the Hornets. The name of the team absolutely does not matter. Look, I respect the nod to history with the Hornets' name, but the fact remains, the players are the same, the management is the same, the arena is the same, and the fans are the same with whatever name sits on the front of that jersey. If a simple name change from Bobcats to Hornets is the only thing keeping you from supporting our team in our city, then I've got nothing for you. Charlotte is not perfect. But here's a fun fact. It will never be perfect. And another one. If you leave, the new city you live in isn't going to be perfect either. You can feel free to complain all day about Charlotte's organizations and institutions, but I, for one, see it differently. Considering where we are, where we've come from, and what Charlotte represents, I think we're doing a pretty good job. I love Charlotte. I was wrong about the Bobcats, and I bet you were too.